channel. Uh, we've just been joined the studio by Sedam Ufori, he's head of news planning and gathering here at uh, Media General. Sedam, thank you very much for your time. And I'm sure you've monitored the uh, discussions uh, all throughout yesterday when, since this action was taken. Is this state capture? Well, I won't put it that way. I would say that the constitution of our country, the 1992 constitution, is fiercely protective of the rights of the media. Mm. Uh, it's clear that the number of provisions in the Constitution that seeks to preserve this right, and it does so jealously. But with respect to this matter... Uh, what does the law say? Well, the 1992 Constitution, if you check Article 162, uh, Clause 3, it is quite clear that there should be no impediment on the rights of any person to institute a media. I mean, if you would indulge me, I'd want to read the specific words uh, that the Constitution uses so that it's not sort of like my opinion that is being uh, imposed on the public, but basically this is what the position of the law is. So Article uh, 162 of our 92, 1992 Constitution, <coughs> under freedom and responsibilities of the media, says that there shall be no impediment to the establishment of private press or media, and in particular, there shall be no law requiring any person to obtain a license as a prerequisite, one, to the establishment of media, or two, to the operation of a newspaper, journal, or other media of mass communication or information. Mm. These are the clear words of the Constitution. Mm. I believe that the, the powers that the NCA draws, mm. though broadly also from the Constitution, is of particular interest to um, Article 164, which is the I limitation. I was just to say that what the NCA board said was that they were just applying the law. So they yes. are also standing on something quite well, valid. Well, they are standing on the provisions, the powers that have been given them under Article 164, mm. which is the limitations and rights on those freedoms. Mm. Now, this is the language that it uses here. The provision of Article 162 and 163, which are the provisions that I read to you, mm. requiring that we do not need licenses mm. to either establish or to operate media houses. It continues to say that the, those articles of this constitution are subject to laws that are reasonably required in the interest of national security, public order, mm -hmm. public morality, and the purpose of protecting the rights of other people. Mm -hmm. So it will stand to reason that the constitution can't be speaking, can't be double speak. Mm -hmm. You can't interpret the constitutional provisions as against what is clear and unambiguous. Mm -hmm. Any other provision, any sub laws, any bylaws that are made by any other agency, even whether those are creatures of the constitution themselves, even the courts, mm. when they run contrary to the provisions of the 1992 constitution or any provision of it, they are void. Mm. So the interpretation of this would necessarily mean that we are regulating that space to allow for people not to operate or function in a manner that is against public morality, mm. presents a threat to national security, mm. or undermines the rights that other individuals are supposed and, to enjoy. And it does not amount to sense. So for stations which have been running all mm. this while, many mm. of them for several years, mm. if there is a reason to pull them off air and take ownership of their property, mm. a fair case would have to be made that the powers that have been given the NCA to ensure that these sort of um, interests, the national interests, mm. the national security interests, etc., are undermined by the continual existence of these frequencies. So if there are radio stations or television stations who do or who have not renewed their licenses, how do you go about it? Because they've I kept engaging them, the, the radio stations themselves have admitted that they've been engaging the NCA over a period of time. Yes. The laws do have to be abided by, so what do they do then? What well, the laws do have to be abided by, including this provision of the Constitution. Mm. I think this is a subject that is uh, open to the courts to interpret. Mm. I don't know the nature of the cases that were brought before the, uh, the, the courts, the, the tribunals that were set up by, by uh, uh, the NC and other, by the judiciary to attend to some of these matters. Mm. Because the court will only deal with the issues that you present before them. Mm. If you went there with the cases that are being made by the NCA, et cetera, mm. and you don't, you don't go to the Supreme Court to seek the Supreme Court's interpretation of this provision, you arrive at the kind of judgment that we have here. Mm. I think this is a constitutional interpretation that is incumbent on the Supreme Court to deliver to us. Mm. And my entreatment is that we pursue this matter at the Supreme Court so that we are all clear in our minds. Because the Constitution's approach to the freedoms that the media is supposed to enjoy is so clear, it's blatant. We cannot assume that another agency, a sub-agency, an inferior agency to the Constitution, in this sense, I don't mean it pejoratively, mm. can also go and set up its own laws as a clawback to that which is unambiguously set out by the 1992 Constitution. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Salem Ofori is uh, head of news planning and gathering. He's also